you might have learned exact values for sine of pi on 2, pi on 3, pi on 4, and pi on 6. But did you ever wonder why they skip pi on 5? It does have an exact value and I'll show how to find it in this video. Before we get to that, let's look at the sine of pi on 6 as an example. Pi radians, remember, is 180 degrees, so pi on 6 is 1 sixth of the way to 180 or 30 degrees. The sine function can be defined as the opposite divided by the hypotenuse in this right angle triangle, or if we're in the unit circle which has radius 1, it's just the length of the opposite side, which is the y value of this point on the unit circle. Now look at this regular hexagon. It's inscribed in the unit circle, so the distance from the center to the vertex is one, and the sine of pi on six is half the side length of the regular hexagon. We can find the length by focusing on this triangle. All the angles are pi on three or 60 degrees, so it's equilateral. This side length is one, so the sine of pi on six, which is half of one of the side lengths, must be equal to one half. If you're okay with that, now let's do a similar thing for the sine of pi over 5. We can represent it on the unit circle, and because it's 1 fifth of the way around to pi, we can inscribe this regular pentagon, and the sine of pi on 5 tends out to be this length here. We can calculate it by constructing some isosceles triangles. Let's say these blue line segments all have length a. What we've constructed there is called a golden triangle. It's an isosceles triangle with one angle of pi on 5 and two angles of 2 pi on 5, or 36, 72, and 72 degrees. Its more famous cousin is the golden rectangle, where if you cut out a similar golden rectangle, you're left with a square. In the golden triangle, you can cut out a similar golden triangle and you're left with an isosceles triangle. In similar triangles, the ratios between side lengths must be equal. We can use that fact to set up this ratio. 1 divided by a must be equal to a divided by 1 minus a. Then solve for a using the quadratic formula, which would give two solutions, but we know it must be positive, so we just take this one. Turns out to be 1 over the golden ratio, phi. Finally, we can use this right-angled triangle. Applying the Pythagorean theorem gives the square root of a squared minus 1 minus a over 2, all squared. There is a bit of arithmetic to do there, expanding the brackets and collecting the like terms, but we can simplify it down to this, which gives the exact value for sine of pi on 5. Nice. I think it deserves a thumbs up. But you might be wondering about pi over 7. Couldn't we do a similar thing to find this exact value? And actually the answer is no. Of course, sine of pi over 7 is a real number, it's this length here. But the 7-sided regular polygon is not constructible, meaning it cannot be constructed with a straight edge and compass. This relationship was studied by Gauss, the prince of mathematicians, when he was just a teenager. One of the first breakthroughs that made him famous was proving that the 17-sided regular polygon is constructible, which means that sine of pi on 17 is an algebraic number. It can be expressed in terms of roots, a lot of roots. Gauss proved that the 17-sided regular polygon is constructible because 17 is a Fermat prime. His work was built on later by Pierre Wanzel, and now the result goes by the name of the gauss wanzel theorem. There's a really nice article about it which I'll link to below. Leave a thumbs up on the video before you go.